I finally got the Merchelago engine started. But not for long. We had to switch this thing straight off. Yes! And that is because we haven't connected any coolant lines yet. But today we'll find out whether this engine rebuild was truly successful or not. And if it was, I might even get to drive it. It feels like yesterday when I picked up my dream car, the Lamborghini Murcielago. It's great. It's everything I ever dreamed of. It was abandoned at a track experience place with a broken engine and some other serious issues. Forget the engine. You've made a big That's mistake. It. But with no previous experience with Lamborghini engines at all, me and my dad attempted to rebuild the car and the engine, finding ways to keep the cost low. You can see almost as clear as day the Ford logo on there. We got the engine started in the last video, but the true test will be when we run it to temperature. I can only hope it holds out. It's really difficult to know where to start because I'm probably gonna end up doing one thing, then having to undo that to do another thing. The one thing that I wanna get done is get this car running to temperature. So to run it to temperature, we need coolant and to put coolant in we need all the coolant lines in so i think that's where i'm going to start and then we'll move on from there well actually what i'm going to start by doing is removing the rear bumper and you'll find out why later but it does make it easier to access some other parts like the bracket to hold the rear diff to the subframe. There's one long bolt which goes through the diff and the bush and then two brackets either side which secure it to the frame. But then we ran into a problem only Mercialagos would have. Here's the issue, okay? Lamborghini make these things. Instead of making things which fit the car, they just make a generic bracket and then add shims. So I've tightened this up with no shims. My dad's doing the front and now you can see that this bracket is so far away from the actual holes it needs to be in because the diff has pulled the engine backwards. So I need to put some shims in the back so <laughs> you could get this. Yeah, <laughs> let's shim the whole car. <laughs> so now I've got to loosen off the brackets that I've just tightened up, just enough so my dad can get the bolts in for the gearbox bracket. And then when it's at the right height, Add in the shims which are actually from Lamborghini. Surely this is only a Lamborghini thing, but I don't know, maybe Ferraris are the same as well. But there is one thing that we've left disconnected. One thing that is missing is the transmission tube which connects from the gearbox here to the front diff there, which makes it four wheel drive. But apparently these drive better, rear wheel drive, less strain on the clutch, they're lighter weight of course, and you can get rid of the front diff and all the drive shafts as well. So I'm going to order a kit for that. But for now, I think we can just drive it, well, hopefully, without that transmission tube in. And to make it drive, all I've got to do is connect up the rear drive shafts, both sides to the rear diff. And when we get the rear wheel drive conversion kit, I can remove the front diff as well. And with that done, it's now time to work out where all the coolant lines go and everything else that goes in the engine bay. Remember, we never took this car apart. And because we didn't take it apart, it makes it a lot harder to put it back together. But now the coolant lines are all connected from the engine to the radiators. And my dad and Freddy are starting to fill up the coolant system with coolant of course I think all the fluids are now in the engine power steering fluid we also have just filled the coolant hopefully now it runs to temperature and fingers crossed no coolant is going in the combustion chamber because if there is then there's gonna be a hell of a lot of smoke Ready? Yeah. first time Oh, and it idles good. good. It's idling good. But wait, that smoke you see there is unburnt fuel, which can mean many things. One possibility is that the timing is out, meaning the inlet or exhaust valves are opening at a completely wrong time. Another possibility could be faulty oxygen sensors. These get a reading of the O2 coming out of the engine, the reading goes to the ECU, and then the ECU can tell the fuel injectors how much fuel to inject or not inject. But there could be a fault with any one of these components. And it seems that's the case because it started running lumpy. It's just having a rev off at the minute. It's just doing its own thing. And then shortly started misfiring. I think that side's missing. Whoa, turn it off. So 
right banks. No, not, now it's now it's doing it on both. I think uh, these need to get it relearned. Yeah. Um, for sure, and uh, I would put it on a diagnostic <laughs> because um, there's something something's going on with. Sometimes the, the it likes it. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't like it. Why are we on fire? <laughs> now, in order to know what's going on, the Lamborghini needs a tool called LDAS, a special diagnostic tool, which of course I don't have. I only have my Autel, which plugs into the OBD port, so we're just going to try that to see if we can get any basic readings. And we did. An issue with the throttle position sensor, but the one we want to look at is cylinder 2, fuel injection short to ground. And after looking, it seems we have an issue with the wiring to the fuel injectors. It looks like after the years of being on track, the wiring's got really hot and fragile. So my dad went in to repair all the frayed wires and the ones that were broken on the loom leading to the fuel injectors. And we tried again. But still, it was running lumpy as anything. And the same fault codes as before. This then led us to think that it could potentially be a faulty fuel injector. So we went to check. If it's the injector, why didn't they pick it up? Yeah. And that's true. In part eight of the build, we sent the fuel injectors off to Artec to be tested, have new baskets and seals put in them. And all of them were running fine. So it seemed weird that it would be a faulty fuel injector. But the best way for us to check that is to switch fuel injector number two over with fuel injector number one and then see if the fault code follows it. So that's what we're doing now. We also slotted a small camera underneath just to see if all the injectors were seated right as well. And they were. So let's try it for the third time. Cylinder two again. Cylinder two again? Yeah, so it's wire in, or you put the same injector back in. <laughs> <laughs> Still no luck, and the fault was still with cylinder two. But we can't be 100% sure that the Autel is giving us the correct reading, as it's not the proper Lamborghini tool. But then we had another idea. So on this engine, they have two engine ECUs, one at the front here, one at the back. And they control each bank. One controls one bank on one side, one controls the other. And you will see... Thank you, Kevin. You will see there is a white tag and a yellow tag. And in the engine, you can see things with, I think that's a white tag. And th no, that was a yellow tag. And then things with a white tag here. And if they're on wrong, the whole engine will be miscommunicating. So I think, should I just switch them around? Cylinder two won't be cylinder two now. If they're oh yeah, because it could be cylinder 10, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to switch these round and see if that's the issue. Okay, so what I've done here now, I've moved the yellow tags to this ECU and then the white tags to the back ECU. I can't see it working, but it might. And then fired up and sounded a lot better than before. Let it run. It almost sounded like it was learning. And the idle got better as time went on. It seems to be running a bit better. I unplugged one of the throttle bodies to see if it was actually working. It started to rev up, so it's like the other ones were compromising for the unplugged throttle body, which is good news. It means it was communicating with everything. It sounded, it sounded good now. It started to idle good, so it was time to rev it. Oh my God, that's sweet. I think we'd finally yeah. cracked it. The Mercia Largo was running perfectly. But there's still so much more to do. But it just feels amazing that we actually managed to do it against all odds. But it's time to crack on with some more. My whole love for Mercer Largos has literally came from the sound of them. They sound like a Formula One car. 
But when Lamborghini use this as their standard exhaust system, it literally kills the sound. This is so heavy and it, it's, it kills it. But we have a solution for that. Well, I hope we have a solution for that. It might be too loud, I don't know. But it looks mental. That's so heavy. Ugh. Drop it, drop it. That is insanely heavy. Inside here is the rest of the titanium exhaust which I got from Carbonize UK. And these guys, oh! I'm not gonna show you that bit yet. These guys have killed it. Wait until you see the center section of the exhaust, which we're gonna show you in a minute. First off, we need to get these bits on. So it's out with the old and in with the new. God only knows what this old back box has been through. And our only way of really finding out what the back box has been through and the car is to check it out using car vertical. Now check this out. I actually found something quite interesting. At the top of the report on the Mercial Argo, it looks all good. There's been no mileage fraud. It's never been recorded as stolen. There's no records of an accident and there's no outstanding finance. But when I scroll through the report, I can see the full history of the car, including any number plate changes. And check out this registration plate change it had here. It used to have V999 LAM as the registration plate. And after copying and pasting that into Google, I found multiple photos of my green Mercialago there. One of them being in London. It looks so clean. And this was in 2008. So what went wrong? Going back to the report, I can see all the MOT tests. And every time an ownership's been changed. I can also see the mileage graph and everything all lines up there. And of course, it's never been recorded as being in an accident. But if you checked a car out that wasn't an accident and it was auctioned off at a car crash auction website, it's likely you would see the photos of when it was auctioned off, just like this Range Rover here. So I'm gonna ask if you've never checked your car out using Car Vertical before, go and do so with the link in the description box below and use code MATT for a discount as well and find some weird and maybe wonderful history about your car or a car that you're potentially about to buy. Back on with the exhaust. The bottom half is on to an extent it's all loose because we don't really know how to line it up without the bumper on yet but there is a top half to this and also there's valves which work on a vacuum which open it and close it right now they are closed which would technically make the exhaust quieter because it's going to push air up through here to the silencers which are over here wait till you see these yes look at that MA logo in the middle, two silences. I'm not sure how much of a job that's gonna do, but that is absolutely mental. And Chris, I will take that from you. Do the honors. Oh, oh look at that. Do that again, I'll do that again. Go. Oh, wasn't as good that time. Go. We both then lined it up to the rest of the exhaust. And of course, because it was titanium, cleaned off any dirt and then stood back and admired. That looks absolutely unreal i well and truly am living my dream right now i can't believe it one last thing left to do is to connect up the vacuum lines to open and close the valves they both connect to each other and then use a t-piece which we need to guide through the car somehow but we'll save that for later and then they go into this box which is connected to power and then with the button we can open and close the valves there it goes they open very slowly don't they Ready? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's review it. That's closed. That's a ten. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving it a five. Out of five. Thank you. <laughs> right. You ready, Chris? I was born ready. This is gonna be so loud. Do you know what actually? You actually put it there. Yeah, I'm scared. Oh, you're. <laughs> yeah, immobilize. Okay. Ready? Yeah.
I'm so gonna have these on it. <laughs> We're gonna get in trouble for that. Oh my god, that That's is sick. so screwy. <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts. But the reason why I took the bumper off in the first place was to fix the wiring for the fan. If you remember in a previous video, we found out that the Track Experience company had hardwired the fan to be on constantly, obviously to keep it cool during the track days. I didn't want it to be on all the time, so I've had to get two new connectors and then wire them in to the wiring loop. And with that done, it's now time to start putting all the body panels back on the car, starting with the rear bumper. All of the panels on this are carbon fiber or a form of fiberglass, but that doesn't mean they're light. Everything is still pretty heavy and fits in weird and wonderful ways. Just look at the rear quarter, look how much it flexes. But that's why I love Merchelagos. There's an issue. Um, so this exhaust uh, is for an LP model. Thought it'd be exactly the same. But looks like these are the exhaust tips and I'll put the bumper on to line them up. When I put them on, they are a little bit too short. So we could be setting fire to the actual bumper. Uh, <laughs> I think they're meant to be out here, but they're like all the way down there. So yeah, I'll put them on now because I really want to drive the car. But yeah, flames is not a good idea when it's uh, there. I think they need to be literally, I think here is probably the best bet. But. It's okay, we could get these lengthened and uh, jobs are good in a bit. Oh well, it's what it is, let's carry on. With all that on, I could then put on the rear panel, which houses the number plate lights. But I'm pretty sure I'm missing a few parts out of this, but we'll get to that in a later video. And then the hardware for the bat wings on the back, which open up for extra cooling into the radiators. On goes the center brake light, and then the carbon air boxes, which sit on the side of the engine here. It's starting to look complete now. I've got to connect the hoses from the throttle bodies to the carbon air boxes, which we don't have air filters for as of yet. But again, we've got time to get that in a later video. I just wanted to get this car driving out of the unit for now. Then last but not least, me and my dad put on the boot lid. We are now just got to, the final thing to get this thing moving after it's had a new clutch is bleed the clutch. Dad's looking for the handle, it is literally here. So, we need to add clutch fluid, which should be uh, under here, I think. There it is. Yeah, how <laughs> do you feel that? Well, through this hole. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's the reservoir. That was definitely an afterthought, wasn't it? <laughs> They've definitely put that in for, oh, how are we going to top up the fluid? And then they've just got a hole saw and just hole sawed through the car, aren't they? <laughs> so all the brakes and everything, all the fluid is going to have to be changed. I'm planning on changing the brakes and doing the suspension, but for now, we just want to get this thing driving. So I'm watching it go. keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. So the idea is to get all the air out of the clutch the hydraulic line which pushes the clutch over oh we still haven't put the handbrake on but we don't need that to drive it okay so there's a bleed up there's a bleed nipple all the way at the top really hard to see but there's a bleed nipple at the top we're gonna crack that i'm gonna pump the pedal fluid's gonna go down this till all the air comes out and we should be able to get a clutch fingers crossed come on young man Right, I've pressed it down. Yeah. Yeah. I continue to push yeah. the clutch down whilst my dad opens the bleed yeah. nipple, lets the air out, then locks it, and then I can lift the clutch back up until all the air's out. Oh! Yeah! Get down. Feels good. There's one final piece to go on right here and it's the most important piece of the car. The gate for the gated manual. And of course the gear knob. Now that I had a clutch pedal, we should be able to move it. I was getting so excited to drive the Merchelago for the first time, just the final pieces to go. Yes! 
Oh! We lowered the car down, right put the ignition on. But after starting it, we realized we had another problem. It seems like the clutch wasn't engaging enough for me to put it in any gear. What about if it's got no clue going first? Maybe we bled it wrong. No. Right, second. Oh, it nearly lost. <laughs> How about second? I've got no clutch. No. No clutch. Well, it seems we have an issue with the clutch. Um, only pump it. <laughs> See if we get anything. No. Flipping clutch! Oh! <laughs> oh, it was so close to being driven. And I'm gonna run out of time. I'm gonna have to end the video right here. No! Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Sketchy moment going on right now. I've uh, disconnected the injectors, but I've also dropped a little bit of fuel into the V of the engine, which, oh my God. It's not like this car spits flames, it's okay. Whoa!